city ploggers who would like to entertain you tonight or this afternoon. Clogging is, first I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about clogging. Clogging is one of many forms of American dance. It is a combination of foot shuffling and American folk and square dancing. And it has been enjoyed by the early Americans. Over the years it has evolved as the immigrants from each country brought their special dance, like the Irish clog, the jig, and even tap dancing from the Negro. Our group started approximately nine years ago with eight ladies who love to dance. And we started in with the traditional tap dance, and we now have 12 active members.
Um, this is uh, culturally based. Um, I need two volunteers. Uh, I need a. Uh, is there an Oriental person out there? <laughs> No? Right there. Okay, well, I guess right I can't there. do that. No, right there. Oh, would you mind helping me? Well, not right now, but uh, in a couple, you know, when we get started. And uh, is, is there a African-American here? No? Well, that should cover most of it anyway. <coughs> um... Yeah, we're going to do a special dance for you and uh, an exhibition, and the drummers are going to sing some special songs. Uh, we're going to do a special uh, storytelling while they're dancing. That's why I needed a couple extra volunteers. Uh, my other volunteers didn't show up either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we have uh, joined this dance. It's uh, people from four races and four directions and we're going to have a young baby in the center and we're going to have a live eagle and I'll, I'll explain all this to you when we get that you know going you know, I'm glad you came <laughs> This is a this is a good thing, you know, because I, I work in substance abuse prevention, you know, with children and families, and uh, you know I was asked last year, and I I felt pretty honored, you know, to be asked to do this, you know, to help out, and I was asked again this year, so I guess they enjoyed it last year. <coughs> and anyway, my name is uh, Joe Whitehawk, and I work for the Missoula Indian Center here, and I've been here with them for five years, November 19th, and I've been pretty successful in what I do, you know, I, I've got uh, some of the kids on Showtime, Nickelodeon, MTV, um, you know, various other shows, and some of the kids travel to Japan, uh, South America, you know, to represent the United States, and when they've done that thing for Showtime, there was two children that were picked from the United States to represent us. And one of the children was with one of the children I worked with here in Missoula. And he represented the United States. But uh, he's not dancing tonight, but, uh, you know. So feel proud that Missoula got represented mm -hmm. all over the world. these guys are very young. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm of, I'm of uh, Sioux, you know, I'm Yankton Sioux, and I'll kind of explain my outfit here a little bit. And, um, <coughs> take this off. Uh, a lot of the feathers, if you notice, they're uh, all eagle feathers, most of them. <coughs> hanging from my chest here on the back and uh, the deal I'm hanging from my waist back here is a bustle it's kind of a story bustle uh, some of the eagle feathers are on there about 150 years old um, and some of these have been passed down from my family and this eagle head here <coughs> is kind of like a, a metal you know, Medal of Honor is one of the highest honors you can get. You know, there are some things that you do. And each eagle feather has a story. And the outfits are not, uh, you know, they're not meant to be called costumes because they're individual and they all mean something. And they... <coughs> <laughs>
like on here and my armbands um, the sides my breastplate no I had uh, some friends do it for me but I, I do you know it's a lot of my own work but I, I teach a lot of this stuff to kids and anybody that's interested too um, <laughs> sounds like they're here <laughs> But, you know, thanks for really being patient with us, you know, uh, I really thank you for that. Uh, you know, in Indians have always known to be kind of late. <laughs> they call it, so they, they call it Indian time, you know. <laughs>
Sarah. Talk about cultural diversity. <laughs> you know, she, she can sing just as good as the rest of them. Oh, well, she, uh, she had a cassette player and she slept with it, you know, listening to this. No, <laughs> no uh, just sitting in with the groups and stuff, you know, you learn. A lot of our songs and stuff are learned orally, you know. I mean, we have tapes now, but that's uh, a lot of the songs have been passed down for thousands of years, you know, in stories and orally. <coughs> Yeah, this is only two stars, but this is a flag song of, because uh, we had a lot of Native Americans that went to war for this country, and a lot of times they weren't even citizens in World War I, and there was a lot of Native Americans in, in, in the World War I. So, this is a flag song. <laughs>
as well. When they have to take the animal's life and uh, leave something for that animal because that fed their family the rest of that winter. You know, they have a lot of respect for the life. <coughs> and being traditional.
there's still some elderly ladies that do this dance quite well. And uh, it's done a lot faster too. Uh, there's three different types of dances that go with that. And these ladies, um, you know, they're pretty hard to keep up with. Uh, oh. <laughs> Next dance.
with the young women that runs around like deer, you know, the gentleness. And then the fancy dance, men's fancy dance, that was a warrior's dance at one time, and it was called a horse dance, um, represented, uh, you know, the capture of the horse. And uh, the people would get uh, horse medicine and they would dance, but it was a particularly fast dance, pretty hard to get up to. I'd like to do uh, the
usually I start a painting by myself with no one else around. I can't even have my wife around. But since you're all here today, I just kind of have to swallow and go ahead. I guess you'd call this abstract expressionism so far.
satisfying. When you do something that you like and other people like it. See anything else in there? What would you like to see in there?
grade. I'm out in the front yard playing football with my buddies, Dave Chicka, Dave Johnson, Jerry Carlson, the Schoen brothers. Okay, Craig, you run out. Do a hook left. I'll pass it to you. Okay, tee down, set, hut. One, two, three, four, six, four, three, four, six, four. Blue, red, three, four, six, four. Blue, red, three, four, six, four. Blue, red. Okay, okay, okay. Hi. Come on, Jerry, throw it to me this time. I know I can catch it, Jerry. Just throw it to me. Come on, come on. Oh, oh, I got it. Jim Brown. Boom.
My drum set. My money. My job. My drum set. Here. Wow, Dad. Thanks. I'll be the best drummer in the whole world. You'll see. I'll practice my drums starting right after my tape route every morning. You'll see. I'll be the best drummer in the whole world, Dad. Here.
consciously. That means you don't know you're doing it. <laughs> and you do it because you're only interested in one thing. You. Or more specifically, the image of you. Now in order to make this part of your vocabulary, it has to become conscious. That is, you have to know, as they said in the 60s, you have to know where your head is at. <laughs> and it is not easy to know where your head is at, because you cannot see your own head. Try it. <laughs> it is very hard to see your own head. Now this isolation also exists all around us. For instance, if you have a dog sitting in front of you and you make a funny noise, if you go, the dog's head will do this. <laughs>
geometrically, and it's going into this object. I do this unconsciously, so do you. To make it vocabulary, I have to be conscious of the shape, and then I can lean anywhere I want to. I mean, if you learned this, you could go home tonight, walk into the house, if anybody's there, go, Happy New Year. <laughs> and even if they hadn't been drinking, they would think that they had. <laughs> this is an illusion. An illusion is something that seems to be there which is not. Life is mostly illusion as far as I can understand. And the only reason we are educated by ourselves is to find the difference between illusion and reality. Between being cool and being real. So this idea of isolation actually helps that, I think. Because we can take the idea and put it into a small part of the body, let's say the hand. You can isolate the hand. Leave the hand there and try and leave.
Memphis song, God of Memphis, this is pretty little Ellie, she plays a pretty mean fiddle.